Hannah and Lucy. Yeah, everyone, um, thank you for inviting me uh, to, for tonight. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, it would be nice to face to face, but it's the world we live in. Um, I've been asked to give a update for the, um, the flooding mechanics and also flood alleviation in the Hansworth ward. Um, as you may know, we've undertaken and our contractors have undertaken work at Hansworth Park. And it's not specifically in the, you know, it's, yeah. So you might have seen the, um, the desilting and the reprofiling of the um, pool that was undertaken. I think that was, it's been a long two years. Well, it could have been last year. Um, so yes, that's obviously got um, some floods benefits um, by creating more storage within the pool. Um, I know it's a bit outside of your area. Um, we've also undertaken works or our contractors and we've been advising at Hanswood Cemetery um, to try to allay the flooding and the very upsetting scenes that were seen there. Um, again, outside of the ward, we're doing a lot of work in Hamsworth Wood, um, up at Greston and Silvercroft, um, near the golf club. Um, and that's to provide online storage on the watercourse itself and to actually do um, culvert improvements to improve um, the flow dynamics. Um, when I was looking at the historic um, records, the flooding historic records for Hamsworth, I must confess I wasn't able to see that many um, incidents. I know the I know that Hamsworth Woods was um, badly affected in 2016, um, but I think from memory I could only find about five, six records of flooding across the whole ward. Um, so really tonight it's to invite um, you guys as the public, you guys who know your local area, whether you're aware of any flooding incidents. Um, obviously we can work with our professional um, and PFI partner Kia for any um, highway flooding. Um, so really it's just to gain feedback from yourselves if there's something that we need to address, if there's something that we need to look at. And we can work with um, partners such as Seven Trent or Kia um, who help manage the highway um, or the environment agency to actually get funding. So one of our future projects, because um, we've got to create a six year pipeline of projects um, for flood alleviation. Um, one of our future projects is Birmingham wide um, flood resilience measures. So that's for properties to put on either flood doors or flood guards for properties that have historically flooded. Um, aspects such as um, tanking, sumps, pumps, air brick covers, basically just trying to make the properties more resilient to flooding where we can't actually address the underlying issue of flooding. Um, so that's a kind of small update. So really it's just to gain um, a bit more knowledge from yourselves in Hansworth, of whether there's anywhere that we need to focus on, um, whether there's anything we're not aware of. Um, and that's my kind of mini update. So I welcome any of your comments. And thank you, Laura. You are, yeah, you are right. Um, flash flooding, it's called surface water flooding. Um, it is becoming more prevalent. It's becoming more common. Um, it's, it's usually caused by large areas of hard standing and increasingly heavy, um, heavy rain over short durations so when it cascades it down. Um, areas tend to flood and we're getting it um, time and time again where we're seeing areas that have experienced flooding that have never flooded previously. Um, so that could be down to aspects such as um, underlying sewer capacity, it could be um, increased hard standing in an area, even loss of green areas. Um, that's a kind of cumulative effect that it can have. Um, Oh, forgive me. I can see a comment in the chat. Um, yeah, from Naomi. From Naomi, thank you. Yeah. I think at the lowest point of Grove Lane and Rookery Roads. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll make a note Anna, of that. Hello. Just, sorry, my name's Lorna. Can I just say that, that I, I understand the point about flash flood, flooding, yeah. but based on what I witnessed last year during, I think it was during the summer, um, there's, there's um, I think it was Naomi, there's been incidents of flash flooding across this sort of ward. And I think most of the time is that, is, is that it, it, it might go unreported because it sort of like happens 
And then with any luck, once the, once the rain subsides, the issue disappears. However, I think the intensity of the problem as the years have gone by, by is getting worse. So there's been incidents of flash flooding on the road that I live on, which is Chantry Road. It was really, 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 really bad last year because it nearly flooded people's properties. It just missed going into people's properties by not that much. And that's because people on the street came out to try and unblock some of the drains. Whoever put in the, the, the I think it was Michael, that the drains do need to be cleared. I, I put a request in with Keir to clear one of the drains on Chantry Road and it's gonna take months to actually do it. So it could very well be that somebody's coming out to do something but it's not gonna happen within weeks, it's gonna be months. So I put that request in last year. I can't remember exactly when it's gonna happen, but it might be sometime this year. So, so there seems to be an, an imbalance between say, putting a request through and the action being taken, but the action being taken on the day, if, if anything's to, to go by what happened um, last year, the residents actually do it and it doesn't get reported. Okay, yeah. Um, I think that is a fair point. Um, sometimes in this heavy rainfall, when it does occur, um, you know, there's an awful lot of rain that falls in a very short period. Um, the roads themselves get flooded. And then, as you say, hopefully it does drain away once the sewers and the, um, the gullies actually have um, capacity to receive the flows. Um, just, just to jump in there a little bit, Hannah, I, I probably should introduce myself. I'm Lucio Grady from Kia. So um, I'm the customer services manager. So uh, the, the drain issue that, that you mentioned, I think it was Lorna. Um, yeah, our, our standard letters do say we'll take, it can take us up to a maximum of 16 weeks um, to attend um, a gully. That, that's a maximum time frame. We're currently working at two to three weeks. So if you're still waiting on a, on a drainage clearance from, from last year, um, by all means, I'll take your details and chase that up because we're, we're currently at around two to three weeks for, for a standard cleanse. Um, and, and yeah, and we will work with the city. We have cyclical um, cleansing programs. So depending on what sort of hierarchy the road is on, we, it may be a 12 month, six month or um, 12 week cleanse. Um, and we are rotating around the city. And we do have um, a number of wards, Handsworth being, being one of them, where we know we have parked car issues. So we can't get to some of the drains on those wards. We're, we're, we're starting now to put in road closure requests. We've just completed Allen Rock Road, um, um, sorry, Allen Rock Ward. Um, and we had, I think it was around 40 road closures down there. And we're starting to, to go around the wards on a ward by ward basis now and put full road closures on um, in order to get access to a lot of the, the, the drains that we need access to. Has it been, it, surprisingly, it wasn't, it wasn't hugely popular in Allen Rock. So we're, we're looking at some of our notification and how we deal with that. People did not take kindly to not being able to park for a day. Um, but it's, as you say, it's, it's a no, it's a necessity now because if we can't get access to the drains, we can't clear them. So we are, we're trying to find new ways around that. Yeah, if I, if I can just come in, Lucy, you are welcome. Um, yes, I, I, I know of some roads um, that were reported uh, as you want to, to, to note them down. Linwood Road. Albert, Linwood Road, Albert Road, uh, Murdoch Road, um, um, Chan Chandra Road uh, that Lona mentioned. Um, uh, I, I, I was going to say, if you have got problems with the cars part, if you email me and prepare some letters that we can uh, put out, or if you put out letters about the road closures, um, it does help because when you yeah. were doing trees on uh, on Stafford Road, it worked very well because you mm -hmm. sent the letters by post and the cars were removed. We do always try to notify, well, we definitely do notify um, if we're going to do a road closure. So the road closures will, they're, they're more effective than us um sort of turning up and hoping for the best if you know what i mean so we're taking more of a of that approach um 
but I, I can certainly check I'll check those four roads that you mentioned and I'll drop you an email back thank you um there was uh something from Naomi Na Naomi uh, is asking for your contact details there um I don't know if my contact details go through the city council so it's all um, it's everything straight to the contact center birmingham.gov.uk slash highways um, I cover the whole of Birmingham, so I've got all 69 wards under me, and every, so we get everything coming in via the City Council's contact centre. Right. Thank you. I can see a hand there. Is it Jen? Jen, is your hand up? Yes, it is. Uh, um, what, one thing I noticed about hands were... And and Ed, I'm, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll take Jen first and then Ed. Okay. Um, what I notice about Handsworth, it's a very hilly area. Um, when you walk around it, you, you realise that you, there's a lot of dips and gullies. Um, Albert Road being one of the lowest ones, and then you're going up to Grove Lane and Soho Road, it's all uphill and downhill. Now, um, Lucy was talking about the surface, cleaning away the leaves, and that's what we're concerned about with our cars and everything on the roads and crossing. But is there a problem underneath? Because Surely there must be a drainage problem why the rain, you know, it's the surface water isn't going down. So is there, is it that the underneath needs to be redone or something? Is it old, you know, old drainage? Right. Um, uh, let me take Ed and then I will bring you um, Hannah. Ed. Thanks. Uh, my question was was partly on the on a similar subject, um, but I also wanted to ask, is there any sort of legislative uh, measure or planning measure that could be used to stop people from basically tarmacking over their front gardens and uh, and, and reducing the permeability of the of the ground because that that increases a, the runoff really significantly as I understand and, and that contributes a lot to the problem doesn't it yeah okay Hannah okay I'm back thank you um both very pertinent points I'll take um Ed's point first because I think that will lead into the um other um, yes, there is planning um, legislation in force. So it used to be that it was pit oh, sorry permitted development if you wanted to pave over um, your driveway. Now I believe it's still permitted development if you use um, permeable materials. So if you were to use um, so my my front drive is gravel. Um, I don't think you're allowed to not without planning permission. I don't think you're allowed to put on complete hard standing without any drainage whatsoever. So um, the the planning um, regulations and guidance that are in force at the moment do have do take that into consideration. And you know, for major large proposals, let's think you know, two hundred homes somewhere that will have to have sustainable drainage systems in force and implemented on the site. Um, each site should be accommodating and looking after its own water without shedding it onto third party land or other land. Um, going back to the other points, because I do think that that's related, um, the subsurface issues. Um, to be perfectly frank, yes, the sewers um, are over 100 years old in the majority of areas. We're still reliant upon Victorian um, infrastructure. Um, some sewers even date back to um, Roman times. Um, they built them good and proper back then. Um, I think it is this, I mean, sewers had the capacity and were built at the time. So we're talking 100 years ago. Um, so as there's been cumulative development, as more homes, businesses, as areas have grown, um, and Birmingham being a fine example of this, um, in some areas, sewers don't have the capacity that they once do, or once did. I mean, um, Seven Trent Water in our area, um, they're very good. They try to um, get sewers cleansed. They ensure that there aren't any blockages. They undertake a lot of modeling to actually find the pinch points in a system. So as you say, for example, I think it was Albert Road, um, where there have been reports of flooding previously. Um, that is in a low area and it does have a large receiving catchment from all the undulating areas kind of dipping down to that. So, yes, you know, there is something in the planning process to try to um, prevent large amounts of hard standing. Um, there is permitted development rights to allow people to 
you know, undertake what they want on their own property or if their landlord so um, permits. But yes, we are reliant upon an old Victorian sewer structure um, and the majority of the gullies do drain, sorry, do drain direct to sewer. So obviously, you know, if the sewer is at capacity, you will see the water coming out of perhaps the gullies first and then nearby manholes. So, yeah, I think that that's a nationwide issue from London to Birmingham. It's, it's, I don't think it can be resolved without billions, and I mean billions of investment and basically digging, all, digging it all up and start, starting again. Mm, okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Hannah. I can't see any other questions now. Can I thank you and Lucy for coming to speak to us? Um, and uh, I will be sending inquiries as they come through. Thank you very much. Uh, and now we're going to move on to uh, local policing. As you know, community safety is one of our priorities in our ward plan. So uh, we have, I was informed we will be having inspect, Inspector Neil, but uh, it looks like is um, Sergeant, I can see the Sergeant, um, Sergeant Phil there. So I'm gonna hand over to you, Sergeant, and you've got five minutes to speak and then you can uh, take questions and listen to any issues that have raised. Uh, over to you, Sergeant. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, um, Inspector Hill's apologies. Um, he's, uh, he sent me in his stead. Um, so thank you very much for, for having me. Um, <clears throat> I'll just give you a, a sort of a brief update on the previous year's activity, really. Um, it's been a really busy uh, 12 months. Um, with, with lots of demands placed on them, um, on us. But, but that being said, we've, we've had some good successes as well. Um, so one thing we'll highlight is we've now got a, a number of uh, street watches set up in the area um, around um, Linwood Road, um, Hampstead Road, um, and um, a relatively new one on Whitehall Road, um, and, and two street watches coming into play for, um, for the Soho Road as well. Um, one of which is sort of a reactivation after after COVID. Um, what Street Watch is, for those that don't know, is um, essentially active citizens, residents, um, walking those streets to show a bit of ownership of those streets, of those locations. And then um, we commit to support those groups um, once a month with um, our PCSOs. Um, and the PCSOs work really hard to get those uh, groups up and running and support them. Um, so that's that's been really successful as part of our sort of connect and build strategy with communities, um, try and improve our visibility um, after quite substantial cuts over the past decade um, and sort of get back out on the streets for us as well. Um, we've also assisted with um, a number of bleed control workshops, workshops around stop and search and e-scoots as well, which I know um, East Coast in particular have been um, raised by quite a few different groups um, since the pilot particularly started in Birmingham around issues caused by bows. Um, so we've been doing those to try and educate people around the legalities or lack of for e-scooters that aren't part of that pilot programme. We've also been doing... Um, having a number of dispersal orders. So we've deployed those onto the SOA road where there's been issues around antisocial behavior in particular, um, around prostitution, street drinking, uh, and things like that. Um, those have had a, a good short-term effect. We've had some really positive results from those. Uh, the issue has been trying to keep that momentum up um, as other demands come in on us. Um, and my staff are, are, are pulled in other directions. Um, <clears throat> we have deployed um, a pop up police station in Lazelles, um, probably since sort of spring, late spring, early summer of last year, um, which was based at St. Silas's Church. Um, in the new year, we've now taken that mobile. So that will also be coming to places around Hansworth, um, such as the Leisure Centre. Um, and I think um, my colleague who covers um, the Hansworth Woodside is looking one in Hampstead Village for us to bring it there at a location. 
um, just to improve people's accessibility to the police and, and give our people an opportunity who they might not wish to call us um, or contact us directly, but some people will speak to us when we're out and about. Um, so um, that's going to be coming to Handsworth um, every Tuesday, um, as well as Lazelle. So we publicise where the location will be on Twitter. So it will be at, at Lazelle's WMP or at WMP Lazelle's, <laughs> one of those two handles um, we publicise it with. Um, we also have recently had um, the policing minister, Kit Malthouse, um, join us for a briefing. He was with the force for a whole day. Uh, he was with us for a couple of hours in the afternoon. Um, so he did a little bit of tour of the Soho Road uh, and then into Lazelle's and Villa Road. Um, we also did a, a briefing to him to highlight the challenges that we get from exempt accommodation in particular um, and how that really affects us here um, in my patch of East Handsworth. Uh, and Lazelle's okay. and showed him some data um, around that, around the concentration of those sorts of accommodation in our area um, and the demands that that places on us. Um, he wasn't aware really of, of exempt accommodation and the challenges it poses. Um, so he has said, but he'll take that away to not just to housing, but also to the DWP um, who, who, who pay for some of those places as well. Um, a part of a move along with the council to, to try and improve regulation. Um, I know the council have done a, a pilot project and done a report recently as well um, on exempt accommodation. Um, so there's been some really strong work um, over the past 12 months. There's still a lot more for us to do. Um, and that's on top of, uh, alongside the ambulance services, we've had, had unprecedented number of calls for service to the police. So actually some of my officers uh, have had to spend a lot of their time over the summer in particular um, backfilling response and not doing some of the longer term community work um, that we're supposed to be doing. Um, that is winding down, so um, we, we should be out there a lot more and a lot more visible um, for the next few months. Um, there are still challenges. Um, the Commonwealth Games um, has opportunities, uh, but it also present challenges for community policing. Um, for us as, as we're likely to be potentially posted to other duties whilst the Commonwealth Games are, are with us. Um, so um, that's something that myself and my, my colleagues covering different areas around here, um, we're going to sort of try and manage between ourselves what resources we have um, to support community policing in that time. Um, and that's probably my five minutes up, if not a little bit more. So um, any, any questions for me? Yeah. Are there any questions, uh, Naomi? I can see one question there. So what I'll do, I will take all the questions at once and then um, invite Phil back to, to respond. Naomi. Is there any, uh, hi Phil, nice to see you. Is there any truth in the rumor that Thornhill Road police station might be closing? Um, I believe the rumor is true. If you're after a time scale, um, I hear the end of the year or 2028. So I mean, it depends on who you speak to as to when it is. Um, what I will be doing is when I know more as to the timescale for the force is I will be looking to try and relocate us ideally to the fire station on Rookery Road. So we will still be past the community and close by. Um, and that will be the same for Jace Pinch's team. Um, so hopefully we won't be out of the area. Lorna. Hi, did you say that there was going to be a pop-up um, police um, shop, for want of a better word, in Hansworth Park and the Twitter handle was going to be Lazelle's to inform people? Because that just seems a bit odd that, I, I, I do realise it's, it, it's broken down into very small areas, that you're talking about something that the facility for Hansworth published on the Lazelle's sort of handle, it, is the scope to actually change that? So it's a bit more relevant for the area or not? Okay. Yeah, so that, that should be pushed out on, sorry, Councillor, that, that should be pushed out on all our um, Twitter handles. Uh, it's just, I, I cover East Hansworth and Lazelle's, um, and for whatever reason, prior to my arrival here, um, we reallocated the Twitter handle at Lazelle's, um, at Hansworth, belongs to the Hansworth Wood team. Um, so, but it will go out on all our 
handles from from base from here so we advertise from uh, across teams if that makes sense so we'll go out to all, all people more people mm -hmm. okay uh i can't see any other questions can i thank you phil oh i had one question overall in hensworth ward what would you say about uh, crime statistics is it going up or is going down sorry um, it, it depends very much on the the sort of type of violence i'm i'm, I'm pleased to say that um robberies and knife crime um over the past sort of 12 month period has seen um, a decline um we want to make sure we, we keep that going um in that direction um so we're doing that through a number of methods at the moment we've got a number of operations where we're, we're flooding areas not just handsworth um, with officers um each evening to to try and improve our visibility um, and put off disrupt um crime of that nature uh, and there'll be real focus by the force on um under 25 violence in particular, because we have seen sort of certainly last year, we, we saw some horrific incidents um, of that. And I know we're coming up to the 12 months anniversary of Keon Lincoln's murder, um, which I believe is Friday. Um, so I, I'm pleased to say we haven't had any incidents of that nature um, on Hansworth Ward um, sort of since really. Um, it's just about keeping that that momentum up um, and working working hard on that. Yeah, thank you very much. Can, can I thank you, Phil, for um, giving us these updates? And you are welcome to stay. It, we've got just one more item in case any anything comes up from there. Uh, and the next item is any other business. Is there any other business, Raki? Uh, Ragib, I can see a hand there. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, uh, we can hear you now. Yeah. Uh, Andrina, recently the local authority carried a consultation on rented sector, i.e. the private landlord and what to do. And the deadline was 4th of January. There were supposed to be leaflets distributed in the wards which are affected this ward is one of those wards. None of the leaflet was actually put there in the, through the doors so that the people can participate. I am surprised. And my second question to you is, which you made a statement earlier, that is uh, that the council is not going to clear the alleyways. Who is going to? Because the, it is the responsibility, in my opinion, of the council. Residents are not responsible for clearing those alleyways. Residents don't own the alleyways. That's my two questions to you. Right. Um, yes, the first question about uh, this uh, consultation. Um, well, as, as we all know, we are operating during difficult time with the COVID-19, whereby the departments have got less staff because some staff have to isolate so it, it, it is it, it is um there are some challenges with staffing however uh i would uh, um, prefer to bring the team back to our next ward meeting I, I i could try inviting them so that we could know more about um about that consultation I don't and, want to know about the consultation because I read it. My question is why they ignored our ward when it came to leafleting. They did it in other wards. Yes, that's why I, I, I would say I can take that up to, I can ask the question, but I always prefer to invite the officers so we can hear from them directly. It's, uh, I wouldn't want to speak on their behalf because I don't know. So what I'll do, I will take that back and uh, if I can get an answer, I will send the response by email. But if, if I can't, then I will see if they can come back and uh, speak to us about those. And then your other question, um, 
your second question was on sorry about the alleyways clearing oh the alleyways um the issue about alleyways is is another one that is challenging for us here in Hensworth Ward. Uh, previously, the council used to clear the roads, open spaces, uh, private land, uh, everywhere the council used to clean, clean up. However, now the council no longer, there's, there's a, a council policy now. The council will not clear any land that doesn't belong to them. Now, when it comes to alleyways, uh, I have been informed that um, the alleyways are, I will say some alleyways, not all, some alleyways. Um, there is a kind of piece of legislation whereby the people, the residents who are using that alleyway, it is their responsibility to look after. So uh, I have made further inquiries regarding um, the alleyway issue, because now that there is that policy, as you know that in Hensworth Ward, we've got many alleyways. So we, we, we need um, some, some clarification from, from the council. So um, that, that's how it is with the, with the alleyways. So uh, but we know it actually, because as far as I'm concerned, the alleyways particularly, which I walk through, is between Douglas Road, Albert Road, and Trubus Road, Laurel Road. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of rubbish. Now, yeah, I, I, can't believe any, it. Any I can't believe it that that is the responsibility of the residents. I will actually question it if that is the council policy. Yeah. As if you knew that today I was making those um, inquiries with the highways seeking clarity about that, that, that actual um, uh, alleyway, which, which is public right of way. So uh, I've made an inquiry. I'm waiting to hear the outcome of that one. Um, so I'll take Lona and then Naomi. Naomi. Lona. Sorry, it, uh, hi, I've just posted the, the sort of like my question in the chat and it's, it's like, how do we know which ones belong to the public and which ones belong to the council? And in terms of the alleyways, because there isn't any signage, but equally, if you're going to take it up with the council, then that's something that needs to be done so that people are actually clear. Because the amount of times that certainly, if you're going between any one of the alleyways, whether it's Douglas to Albert or vice versa or any any of the other ones, it's, it's just horrendous, the mm. amount of, rubbish that's actually there um mm. and, and it's because people think they can actually hide you know the chest of drawers nappies whatever it is um down the alleyways because people don't think people are actually using it the other mm. sort of query i had it's still on the topic of rubbish because it's something that bothers me it, it um as i'm sure it does um, other people as, as well for the amount of rubbish that actually gets fly tipped i'm trying to work out if it's possible to get cameras fitted I think this issue came up before, not quite sure what happened since, but it, it, is there a possibility of actually having mobile cameras or something done on a rotational basis to hit hotspots so that, you know, if it, it can sit on Chantry Road for a few weeks or a couple of months and then it can move to, I don't know, say, um, Albert Road or, or, or Antropus Road or somewhere else, just so that um, it's possible to pick up people who are actually doing the fly tipping because if you're on a road that's a black spot, it's one, it's depressing and it's just horrific in terms of what you can actually see in terms of the rubbish. And I'd, I'd, I'd say, I'm just wondering if there's any possibility of having some sort of- The cameras. Okay. But, well, well, well it's, it's not so much a stationary camera, something that's mm. mobile so that mm. it can be shared because it's not just on one street, the, 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 the problem's right across the board so that so if it appears on Chantry Road to stay for a couple of months, hit that, get that sorted, then it can be moved to Whitehall Road, then it can be moved to, I say, Albert Road or something similar, just so that you're not just concentrating on one area and there is an effort to do something about it across the piece. I don't know if that's possible. Right, let me take Naomi, then I, 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 will, I will answer both questions. Naomi. 
Um, and well, it's really just to support what uh, Raghi Bissan and Lorna have been saying. Um, the alleyways in Antrobus Road are actually currently, as we speak, a very severe fire risk, uh, off Antrobus Road rather, maybe the ones that Hendrina is looking at, but we're talking about an immediate and urgent fire risk now. These are environmental health issues uh, as well as being fire risks. So it seems incredibly urgent. I hope at the end of this meeting, we can um, have an agreement from, from the councillor and from the officers that this will be taken up very, very seriously, because it's actually very, very dangerous. Hmm. Th thank you for, for, for your questions. And uh, as you, you are right, um, as we say in our ward plan, you will remember that was one of our, our priorities. And um, you might notice that some of the alleyways are gated. So when an alleyway is gated on both sides, you wonder when there's rubbish in, where, where does it come from? And um, obviously if, if it's gated, that, that there are locks there. So somebody has put uh, that, 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 that rubbish there. And um, so what we need to do, I, I'm pleased now that uh, Naomi, you have been successful um, uh, with, with your project. We, we will look at it as, as a pilot. We will see how yours get on, because then if we, if yours is successful, then, then we can then look for funding elsewhere and, and we can expand clearing all of the alleyways that we've got, but clearing only has not has proved not to help. You you have to clear, but at the same time we have to bring in education and enable and help the residents that live close to actually take a responsibility themselves and look after those alleyways. So and, um, the council has introduced the mobile household recycling center for that purpose. We are hoping that the residents will um, make use of this resource, uh, bring their rubbish. So far, uh, so far, um, I have seen residents making use of it, but it, it's, a, it's new. So we are still advertising. So let's advertise this uh, mobile mobile household recycling center and let's encourage everybody to make use of it bring the rubbish that could have ended up on the street or open space or on the alleyway when the when the trucks are coming in your area uh, let's try and uh, inform our neighbors whoever we can reach social media so that people can bring their rubbish in there. So the, the issue about, about, about the cameras um, that you have raised, uh, it, it is, uh, we had requested the, the, the cameras. So while the council has brought this resource, we want to see how this resource is doing. Um, and then uh, we, we, we could see how um, the issue about the cameras. So uh, I will I will take Ragib, and I'm mindful of time. Ragib, sorry, Hendrina, no, a mistake. Oh, it, it, it's an old hand. Okay, that's fine. All right. Uh, if there are no, oh, Ed, is your hand up? Yeah, just Ed. just on the on the same issue. Um, regarding uh who's got responsibility for clearing the alleyways of course in in this neighborhood there's so many homes which are uh privately rented properties or hmos so are we expecting the people who live in the houses to clear something that might well be the landlord's responsibility the people actually understand um what what their responsibilities are are landlords just ignoring it because there's somebody in the house uh, how is that going to be pursued yeah, as you are saying, there's a mixture of, of homes um, in our ward, like, like, like you have mentioned, some are owned, some are, 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 are let, the others are HMOs, 
and housing associations and so on. And the tenants um, in some of them are there for a short period of time. So it is something that we need to sit down as, as the world forum and have a discussion on how we move forward. But yes, you are right. Thank I you. never get tired of hearing that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we will not give up. We, we, we are trying. Right. Can I now thank everyone for coming, um, for staying on? Andrina, just, just very quickly, there's a yeah. message in the, in the chat and somebody's just asking, are, are the mobile um, rubbish units a, than a trial? It's not a trial, is it? It's to, it's, they'll be available until Perry Bar reopens, is that right? Uh, what we know is what I know at the moment. It, it, yes, it is a pilot. So whether it will be a, a extended, if if it, it it achieves its objective, uh, we will see. When does the pilot finish? I I haven't got the the exact date. Um, at, at the moment, but uh, as as you might have have seen, um, it's actually picking up. P uh, people are bringing in the, the, their rubbish. And we have had other voluntary groups assisting, uh, we've been uh, informing them when it's coming. So le let's make use of it. Um, and then we, we will uh, report uh, back to the council and how, how it's doing and the council will make a decision going forward. Sorry, one final question. I know that they, they publicize um, on social media, are there any plans to put it anywhere else? Because if you're, I'm not on social media, but if you're not on social media, how do you actually find out where the, where the, the sites are going to be? Or is it still just the case that it will only ever be on social media? No, it's not on social media. Uh, for example, the last week, we, we are having one tomorrow, um, tomorrow on, uh, on Hull Road, but we have leafleted the whole area around Holly Road, Whitehall Road, Lansdowne. We have dropped leaflets in the whole area. So, it, it, and that has been helpful because the residents uh, have come out and assisted me putting out those leaflets. So this is something that um, I've seen works and uh, putting out those leaflets. So I will see tomorrow how it's going to be. If you come round Hall Road, I will be there. Okay, thank you, Lona, for your question. All right, so now we come to the end of our meeting. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a good night. Good night. Thank you, good night, thank you.